morning. We welcome you who are in the sanctuary, those that are viewing us online. It's so good to have all of us together as we continue to take and recognize our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Craig Larson, Pastor Mike Sager, and for those of you who are keeping track, it's the first time we've been together since Labor Day. Uh, it's so good to have all of you here as we continue to take and recognize what God has given to this place where truly we do celebrate and we make who. You guys do that so well as you continue to reflect the love and grace that God has provided for us. Note the announcements for this coming week. Uh, note that on Friday, October 13th, we're going to be having Ray Robinson's Celebration of Life. If you're able to come and support the family, please do so. If not, please remember Kay and the rest of the family in your prayers. On Tuesday morning at Madeira Sunrise, we're going to have Craig's Coffee Chat. Yes, that was the name that was selected amongst all those wonderful things. Uh, one of the things we talked about is somebody who came up with that said, we'll just call it Triple C. Well, we better say Craig's Coffee Chat before so that people understand. Uh, it's going to be at Madeira, Sun uh, Madeira Sunrise at 9 a.m. this coming Tuesday. There's going to be a special food drive next weekend for the Gro Crossroads Nogales Mission. Uh, the Social Concerns Ministry is gathering that together, collecting rice, beans, canned goods for the mission. Uh, the bins will be in the northwest in the northwest hallways, so please make sure of that. It's an opportunity, again, to make a difference in a very real, meaningful way for those who are desperately in need. Pastor Mike is going to be doing a new members class Thursday, October 12th at 9.30. It's an opportunity, again, if you would like to know more about Desert Hills and, and become a member of this place, take this time. It's a great way to meet different pe new people that are also new to the church, as well as if you've been coming here for a while and would like to become a member, please just call the church office uh, and so that we can sign up and make sure we've got enough materials for everyone. Also on Friday, October 20th, we're going to be doing the flourishing in the third third of life. It's going to run through December 1st. Space is limited. Sounds like a clearance sale. Time is limited. But the last time when Pastor Mike did this, it, it, the response was overwhelming. And so please, if you're interested at all, please register so that we can continue, continue to keep what a problem to have, to keep the numbers to where it becomes manageable. Also, on Thursday, October 19th, the men's breakfast. Um, this, this particular month, we're going to be having a barbershop quartet. And so please make note of that, that Thursday, October 19th. Tickets are available at the front desk. Spread the word. This is one of those neat programs where you can bring your friends uh, that truly are uh, not only in need of some food, but also in need of that opportunity to make some fellowship with other men. I think that's the announcements for this day. And so let's continue our service with a word of prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that you have called us, you have gathered us, you have brought us together in this place to hear the wonder that is you, O oh God. We pray for those who are traveling, those who have already returned. We ask, God, that as we continue to worship you in our strength and our wonder, that you also give us that spirit that allows us to know you. God, we do pray for our brothers and sisters in Israel. Continue to give them that confidence and that strength that even in during this difficult time, that you are there. We pray, God, that you continue to have that peace that does pass all our human understanding. God, bless us now as we enter into this worship, in this place, in this time, whether online or in the sanctuary, know that we have been claimed and called as this community of faith. In your name we do pray. Amen. Please stand as we sing our opening hymn.
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So I was getting excited. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, <clears throat> let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. <coughs> Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. From you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen.
Today's first scripture readings are from Psalm 92 and Jeremiah chapter 17. The psalmist proclaims in Psalm 92, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. And now from the book of Jeremiah, the prophet states, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, its leaves are always green, it has no worries in a year of drought, and never fails to bear fruit. The word of the Lord.
Today's second scripture reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Paul states, So, from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if any was, anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sisters and brothers in Christ, here in sanctuary and online, what a friend we have in Jesus that we can bring our lives and there find the hope and promises of God that we might flourish. Amen. It's great to have you back with us singing. It's always so nice to have the fall come and have all our choirs back to full strength. It's been great this summer, but it's great to see uh, all the new faces returning uh, back to Desert Hills. So welcome back, all of you. We are beginning this week, and for the next four weeks, we're talking about flourishing where you are. Flourishing where you are. And it's based upon the psalm you just heard, Psalm 92, where the psalmist reminds us that the righteous, the righteous are like palm trees and the cedars of Lebanon. They will flourish in the house of the Lord. We will be thinking and imagining what does it mean to flourish. Now flourish is an interesting word. We oftentimes think of flourishing as an event that happens in the present moment. But the reality is flourishing is always something that continues in the future. Flourishing is this concept of growing today so that you may continue to grow into the future. That flourishing always has an image of moving forward. God doesn't just want you to flourish at this moment or sometime in the past. God wants you to continue to flourish into the future. To flourish. To flourish based upon the promises of God. So the next few weeks we'll be talking about what does it take for us as people of faith to flourish. And today we start with a reminder that our flourishing begins based upon God's promises. That we see in scripture, those who God claims as righteous are not based upon their actions, but based upon their willingness to trust God and to trust God's promises. We hear that Abraham is credited as righteous because he trusts God enough to leave behind what he was and move to a new land. The Apostle Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians that our righteousness comes by trusting what Jesus has done for us and the world on the cross. And we are called to be about that ministry of reconciliation, that ministry of promise. Of God's love for us and for the world. And in today's Psalm 92, we are given some images to help us think about how do we begin to flourish. And the psalmist gives us two images. One image that the psalmist gives us is the cedars of Lebanon. Now the cedars of Lebanon continue to exist today. With special permits, you can actually go and visit the cedars of Lebanon. They have made it a protected area so that the cedars continue to flourish. Because in reality, those cedars have been around over 5,000 years. The cedars of Lebanon are 
strong and determined to continue to survive. Even though they have experienced times of drought, drought and other things that have harmed them, they continue to flourish. Which reminds us that God's promises help us in times of struggle. And those times when we are experiencing the droughts and challenges and storms of life. It is the cedars of Lebanon that King Solomon uses to build the temple of God. The holy temple in Jerusalem is built by the cedars of Lebanon. Reminding us that God builds in us. His very temple. That we are the temple guard. We are the cedars of Lebanon that God uses to build our temple. The cedars remind us of God's faithfulness and God's commitment. Psalmist also reminds us and gives us the image of the palm tree. And the palm tree is a unique tree because one of the things about palm trees is they need to be planted in the right places. Those of you that have come back from the north probably did not see many palm trees in Wisconsin. Palm trees need certain things, don't they? They need certain environment to grow. You have to plant them in the right place. And if you don't, they will not survive. They can't handle the climate. The changes. It takes a right place. The psalmist is reminding us that we need to plant our lives in the right place. As the prophet Jeremiah tells us, we need to plant our lives by the stream of God's living water. Where we plant our lives makes a difference how and if we flourish. And the psalmist tells us we should plant ourselves in the house, in the promise, in the love of God. But not only do palm trees need to be planted in the right place. A palm tree, as it begins to grow, needs support. A palm tree, a small palm tree, will not survive if it's not adequately braced. So it can be supported as its roots begin to go deep. Because at first, the roots are always too shallow to support the weight of the tree. They are easily tipped over. They are easily destroyed unless they are properly braced. Which reminds us that we need to brace, e brace each other in our lives. <laughs> that we too, like that palm tree, need to be braced up by one another and by God's love and grace in order for us to allow our roots to dig deep into God's grace. That one of the benefits of a church, one of the purposes of the church is to be a braces for one another. So that when you are experiencing the storms of life, we hold each other upright. We care for one another. We brace one another. We remind one another of the promises and love of God. We need each other. Next week, we'll talk about in order to flourish, you need relationships, healthy relationships in your life. Not only does science tell us that, but scripture tells us that. We need to brace one another as the palm tree is braced when it's first planted. The palm tree needs to be trimmed. If you've ever seen a palm tree that's not trimmed, you will soon discover it's oftentimes full Filled with disease and other animals that hurt the palm tree. The dead leaves need to be trimmed off so that the new starts can grow and flourish. So it is in our lives. God promises to prune us. Prune us as a gardener prunes the grapevine so that we may continue to produce good fruit. God promises to Cut off those parts of our lives that are not allowing us to flourish as God desire for us. The palm tree reminds us of our need to let go. But also to celebrate what was. In two weeks we'll talk about the need to be grateful for how God has and continues to be present in your life. That we look back 
and how God has been faithful so that we can look forward trusting that God will continue to be faithful. And the other thing, amazing thing about the palm tree is the palm tree can withstand hurricanes and storms like no other tree. It has the ability to be flexible, to bend as the winds come raging against it. It does not topple over. It responds with flexibility and it adapts to where it is. So we too, so we too adapt. We too bend to God's will so that our lives may continue to flourish no matter what experiencing we, ha we have at this particular moment. Like the palm tree, because of God's grace and God's promise, we can bend and not break. Because we can trust that God is there. That's the beginning of flourishing. You see, sisters and brothers in Christ, flourishing does not look like the way the world thinks flourishing looks like. Flourishing in the kingdom of God is about the relationships you have, about your ability to face whatever life throws at you with a sense of confidence and peace that you are not and will not be alone. Like the Apostle Paul reminds us, we look at each other and the world differently. We look through it under the promises of God. To the cross of Christ where Jesus offers his life for us and for the world. So we bend, we care, we support one another in the midst of life. And we flourish. God promises you that you will flourish at whatever stage of your life you are in. We live in a world that tends to tell us that as we move through life, we become less productive. We flourish less. That is not true according to Scripture. Psalm 92 reminds us that even in our old age, we will bear fruit. Good fruit for God's purpose. We will flourish in the kingdom of God. We can flourish in our relationships we can flourish in our purpose. We can find meaning in what God brings to our lives this day. If you look at scripture, God uses people that the world thought were too old. Abraham has a child at 98. Moses is called long past the days of his youth. Elizabeth and Zechariah are told they will have a child and he will proclaim the way of the Lord. Over and over again, God upsets the cart and uses those the world thinks no longer has purpose for God's great purpose. And it's no different in your life. You may not be written in a book, but you'll make a difference in somebody else's life. Your life still has purpose. God invites you to live your life up to that final breath before God offers you the new life in Christ. There is not a point in your life at any age, at any stage where God is done with you. God continues to invite you to flourish, to plant yourself deeply in the promises and love of God. To bear good fruit. As we care for one another. So sisters and brothers in Christ. Know that your life has meaning. Don't listen. To the reality of the world. Listen to the promise of God. Those. Who plant their lives in the kingdom of God. Will bear much fruit, fruit, fruit and flourish. So if you're interested in learning more about how you may flourish, I invite you to join that small group discussion we'll be having starting in October 21st. Where we'll kind of go through the step and talk about what are some things and how do we see ourselves flourishing at this stage of life. But today I invite you to think about this question. How can trusting in God's promises of love for you? God's promises of love for you help you to flourish in your stage of life today. Today is the day God 
is inviting you to flourish. Today is the day God invites you to plant your life in the courts of the Lord. Today is the day God wants to produce in you good fruit. Doesn't matter what the world claims. The one who created you, the one who knows you, the one who loves you, has told you, you will flourish in the house of the Lord and bear good fruit. Go, sisters and brothers. Go and flourish this day. Amen. Together, let us affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will now have the gathering of offerings.
Hear the words of the psalmist from Psalm 113. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him, for he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower in the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness is with their children's children. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come this day to give you our thanks, our prayers, our gifts of time and the ability to proclaim your good news to a world that is in need of your word of hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have recently died, including Shirley Larson, Sheila Westrich, and Shirley Beach. Oh Lord, remember them into the arms of your eternal love. We praise that you would be with their family and friends who grieve. May they always know the resurrection and the peace that passes all human understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. New to the prayer list is Mary Lehman, Ed Sandin, and Miriam Burt. Leaving the prayer list with thanksgiving for healing is Terry Clayton. We pray for all who continue to be on our prayer list and for those who we know to be in special need of your care and compassion. We now silently pray to bring our own cares and concerns before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We come before you with grateful hearts, seeking your guidance and blessings. We ask that you grant us the strength and wisdom to flourish in all aspects of our lives. Help us to grow in faith, love, and compassion. May we be a source of light and hope to those around us. Give us the courage to face challenges with grace and perseverance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, draw us closer to you each day so that we might flourish in our spiritual lives. Fill our hearts with your love and peace as we seek your will and follow your path. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we pray for those in need, for sick people, for those hospitalized, for the lonely, and for all those who are experiencing life's challenges and struggles. Give them your strength, and healing, comfort those who grieve, and reassure all those who doubt your presence in their lives. Guide and bless all those who provide aid and comfort, especially the caregivers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are faithful and true. You always keep your promises. You have promised us eternal life, and we rejoice in your salvation and hope. By your compassion, we surrender our lives to your transformation and your guidance. Grant us the wisdom to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please stand as we join our hearts and our voices to sing together the prayer that Jesus has taught us.
pray that this service has been a blessing to those that are in the sanctuary, those that are online. If you are a first-time visitor, we please invite you to stop by the welcome desk as truly we get a chance to get to know you and you get to know the things that happen here. Hear the blessing today. May we who are rooted in Christ's love, grounded in faith, called to be a blessing, continue to flourish in God's kingdom. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our closing hymn. Live each moment in the promises of God and the power of God's love. We, we will, will live and we will flourish. flourish. Amen. Amen.